Uh, as I always do, anything, comments, miracle stories, questions, uh, expressions, uh, it could be anything. Because uh, we're just here to give it over to the Holy Spirit to bless us all. And, um, and you can feel it. I mean, it's a real experience. You can feel that openness. That uh, That's the, the tenth characteristic of a teacher of God, open-mindedness. And uh, you start with trust and you get your honesty going and you keep working through and then if you really follow it through to the end, you are completely open-minded. Which I would say is, is completely non-judgmental. Uh, you don't have an opinion. You don't take a stand uh, for something in the world, for or against. Uh, you are accepting. You are loving. And, and everyone feels it too, because it's an attitude that's so apparent that you can't mistake it. You know, there's no uh, mistaking that openness. And so, that's what I uh, offer up and, and ask for for our, our beautiful gathering this morning. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but there are things going on in this world that are pretty horrible. Right? There are wars, there's devastation, there's hunger. What do we do if that bothers us? Well, we do what Jesus taught us even 2,000 years ago about, you know, before you get the, the speck out of your brother's eye, you get the beam out of your own. That He was teaching 2,000 years ago, long before there was psychology and words like uh, perception and um, defense mechanisms and ego. Uh, he was teaching that as it says in Corinthians, you're looking through a darkened glass. You know, you're seeing something that is distorted. And I would say the first thing that you do, it's kind of like in 12-step programs, I mean, until you come to the admission that your life is unmanageable, the way it's constructed, or your vision, your perception is unmanageable, the way it's constructed, then you really have no impetus to change it. Uh, if you just say, that's just the way it is, like the old uh, song, that's just the way it is, some things will never change. War, pestilence, hunger, greed, you know, it seems like there's a pretty strong uh, case of this has been going on for uh, hundreds and thousands of years. So it seems like there's quite a lot of evidence, and it would seem that you could lean it over and fall into the rut of that's just the way it is. Uh, some things will never change. That's the human condition. But what I say is what Jesus taught, what I teach is that it's a perceptual problem. That uh, I would say with course groups, uh, just like in 12 steps groups when people introduce themselves, Hi, my name is so and so, and I'm an alcoholic or a food addict. You could say in the course groups, Hi, my name is so and so, and I have a perceptual problem. Uh, if you're seeing war, if you're seeing hunger and Devastation is the word you use, you have a perceptual problem. And the mind needs to be corrected. So, like when I uh, last, last year in March, I was invited down to Argentina. And just when I got down there to do all my Course in Miracles gatherings, my 19 consecutive Course in Miracles gatherings, the United States started dropping bombs on Baghdad. Just when I arrived, <laughs> as the Ambassador of Peace, from seemingly coming from America, uh, protests broke out in the streets. Thousands of people, angry, <laughs> some of them, uh, spilling out with waving banners. Um, Stop the bombing and so on and so forth. Although I did, a lot of the banners were in Spanish and I did ask them, what does that one banner over there say? And, and they translated it for me from Spanish to English. It said, Senior Bush, take up knitting. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Nothing like the 60s, you know, we didn't have any kind of banners like that. <laughs> USSR, take up knitting. No. Uh, it was take up knitting. And so I would go to the gatherings and, and that was a thought on people's minds, the world conditions. Not only the fact that it seemed to be that the United States was bombing Baghdad and the, and the war was breaking out. Another war, a major war. but. But down in Argentina, children are starving, the economy has collapsed, you know, the peso has been, was held so long up with the dollar that it has completely collapsed. So, you know, you have, uh, the conditions are ripe for uh, help. There must be another way. 
uh, when not only there's a world condition, but you're not so cozy at home either. You've got children dying, uh, the middle class is now, the lower class is trying to get food on the table. And so, uh, one woman down there even said to me, you know, is it actually possible to do A Course in Miracles in Argentina? It was a sincere question for her. She was basically thinking the conditions are so bad down here that I don't even know if, if Jesus in that book can work. Like it's, it's gone too far. Uh, we're too far gone. It's too much chaos. You know, police on the take, bribery, uh, economic strife, world war bre breaking out, looking like, you know, with bombs dropping on Baghdad. And I actually told her, I said, this is better. Uh, when your world is falling apart, and you go to the Course and go to Jesus, you're, you're in a real good position for awakening. Fast because track. They're in the fast track. You've got to come to a point of devastation where you realize that your life, your perception as it's been constructed, is unmanageable. It's not working. And it doesn't feel good either. There it's, must be a better uh, way. There's got to be a better way, right. You, you have that desperate feeling. And so, that's really, uh, that's the first step is to start to say that, uh, okay, I've been living in denial of, of the light. I've been living in the denial of the reality of God and Christ. And I've been misperceiving <coughs> and perceiving a distorted world. Now that's a pretty big leap, admittedly. And so, uh, in my own life, I had to start to really work through it. I mean, I, I was basically an activist, trying to make the world a better place, really. And uh, I put a lot of energy into that, as I know a lot of people have, uh, you know, whether it's the environment or uh, bringing an end to war, bringing an end to hunger, bringing world peace, uh, nuclear, stopping the nuclear proliferation, you know, I was very much a, of an activist. And I had to come to a point, working with the Course, where it said, you know, seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. I thought, what is this about? You know, wow, that is, for an activist, that's the, that's a real, that's the kiss of death. Uh, you know, <laughs> to really start to give your mind to that kind of a, a thought. And I had to start to allow myself to, to begin, to just begin to think, what if it is my perception that's the problem? What if I'm not seeing clearly? What if I'm actually seeing something that isn't there? And and it's so distorted that I'm getting all riled up and upset about something that actually doesn't exist. And, and I think for all of us it comes in different ways. I mean, for me, it, it never really struck home until back in the early 80s, and this was way before I even had the course, was, was my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer. And so I watched this very um, jovial, happy, gentle man with a nice big belly, looked like Santa Claus or Kris Kringle or something, who I adored, uh, going down to be a walking skeleton. Uh, that'll shake you up a little bit, you know, no matter what age you are, when you, when you see a loved one uh, going through that. It's not so much the scale of a world war, but it certainly is enough to, to hit you between the eyes with a spiritual two-by-four. And, and that really forced me to start saying, uh, well, basically, I talked to God. I said, if, I told God, if you had anything to do with what I'm perceiving, anything at all, I don't want anything to do with you. Speaking of Santa Claus, can you picture Dave with a little red, white cap on his head? He's the perfect Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and a bigger, a bigger white. Just perfect. There it is. Yeah. Happy Santa Claus. He was that way. Uh, Harry, actually a very German name, Heinrich Hermann Hoffmeister. <laughs> uh, uh, they call him Harry. But anyway, when you, when you really love somebody and, and they're going through that, then you have to start to bring it back. And I told God, if you have anything to do with what I'm perceiving with this walking skeleton, I, I want nothing to do with you. And then and God spoke to me in my mind and said, I don't. This is your misperception. You know, this is not uh, what, I, what I will for you. I've got something. But you need to be healed. Your mind is looking through a darkened glass. You are seeing a distorted world. And if you want to be happy, which is God's will for you, you're going to have to follow me inward and go through these darkened beliefs and come to healing. The kingdom of heaven is within. It's not going to be found out there on the screen of the world.